Many stories matter. Stories have been used to dispossess and to malign. But stories can also be used to empower and to humanize. Stories can break the dignity of a people. But stories can also repair that broken dignity. The single story creates stereotypes, and the problem with stereotypes is not that they are untrue, but that they are incomplete. They make one story become the only story. There are people who dislike you because you do not dislike yourself. Never ever accept because you are a woman as a reason for doing or not doing anything. All over the world, girls are raised to be make themselves likable, to twist themselves into shapes that suit other people. Please do not twist yourself into shapes to please. Don't do it. If someone likes that version of you, that version of you that is false and holds back, then they actually just like that twisted shape, and not you. And the world is such a gloriously multifaceted, diverse place that there are people in the world who will like you, the real you, as you are. If you start thinking about being likable you are not going to tell your story honestly. We teach girls to shrink themselves, to make themselves smaller. We say to girls, you can have ambition, but not too much. You should aim to be successful, but not too successful. Otherwise, you will threaten the man. Because I am female, I am expected to aspire to marriage. I am expected to make my life choices, always keeping in mind that marriage is the most important. Now, marriage can be a source of joy and love and mutual support, but why do we teach girls to aspire to marriage and we don't teach boys the same? You deserve to take up space. Culture does not make people. People make culture. Our histories cling to us. We are shaped by where we come from. To choose to write is to reject silence. If you don't understand, ask questions. If you're uncomfortable about asking questions, say you are uncomfortable about asking questions and then ask anyway. It's easy to tell when a question is coming from a good place. Then listen some more. Sometimes people just want to feel heard. Here's to possibilities of friendship and connection and understanding. Privilege blinds because it's in its nature to blind. Don't let it blind you too often. Sometimes you will need to push it aside in order to see clearly. Your life belongs to you and you alone. I am a strong believer in the ability of human beings to change for the better. I am a strong believer in trying to change what we are dissatisfied with. Stories matter. Many stories matter. When we realize that there is never a single story about any place, we regain a kind of paradise. Of course, I am not worried about intimidating men. The type of man who will be intimidated by me is exactly the type of man I have no interest in. We teach girls shame, close your legs, cover yourself, we make them feel as though by being born female they're already guilty of something. How, stories, are told, who tells them, when they're told, how many stories are told are really dependent on power. The only reason race matters is because of racism. The problem with gender is that it prescribes how we should be rather than recognizing how we are. Imagine how much happier we would be, how much freer to be our true individual selves, if we didn't have the weight of gender expectations. The real tragedy of our post-colonial world is not that the majority of people had no say in whether or not they wanted this new world, rather, it is that the majority have not been given the tools to negotiate this new world. I have chosen to no longer be apologetic for my femaleness and my femininity. And I want to be respected in all of my femaleness because I deserve to be. Why must we always talk about race anyway? 
can't we just be human beings? And Professor Hunk replied, that is exactly what white privilege is, that you can say that. Race doesn't really exist for you because it has never been a barrier. Black folks don't have that choice. I think you travel to search, and you come back home to find yourself there. I often make the mistake of thinking that something that is obvious to me is obvious to everyone else. You can't write a script in your mind and then force yourself to follow it. You have to let yourself be. Our society teaches a woman at a certain age who is unmarried to see it as a deep personal failure. While a man at a certain age who is unmarried has not quite come around to making his pick. This was love, a string of coincidences that gathered significance and became miracles. The educated ones leave, the ones with the potential to right the wrongs. They leave the weak behind. The tyrants continue to reign because the weak cannot resist. Do you not see that it is a cycle? Who will break that cycle? She could not complain about not having shoes when the person she was talking to had no legs. All over the world, there are so many magazine articles and books telling women what to do, how to be and not to be, in order to attract or please men. There are far fewer guides for men about pleasing women. Stories can break the dignity of a people, but stories can also repair that broken dignity. Some people ask, why the word feminist? Why not just say you are a believer in human rights, or something like that? Because that would be dishonest. Feminism is, of course, part of human rights in general but to choose to use the vague expression human rights is to deny the specific and particular problem of gender. It would be a way of pretending that it was not women who have, for centuries, been excluded. It would be a way of denying that the problem of gender targets women. Racism should never have happened and so you don't get a cookie for reducing it. The novels I love, the ones I remember, the ones I reread, have an empathetic human quality, or emotional truth. This quality is difficult to fully define, but I always recognize it when I see it. It is different from honesty and more resilient than fact something that exists not in the kind of fiction that explains but in the kind that shows. The problem with gender is that it prescribes how we should be, rather than recognizing how we are. Lasting love has to be built on mutual regard and respect. It is about seeing the other person. I am very interested in relationships and, when I watch couples, sometimes I can sense a blindness has set in. They have stopped seeing each other. It is not easy to see another person. There are people who think that we cannot rule ourselves because the few times we tried, we failed, as if all the others who rule themselves today got it right the first time. It is like telling a crawling baby who tries to walk, and then falls back on his buttocks, to stay there. As if the adults walking past him did not crawl, once. People have crushes on priests all the time, you know. It's exciting to have to deal with God as a rival. There are many different ways to be poor in the world but increasingly there seems to be one single way to be rich. Dear non-American black, when you make the choice to come to America, you become black. Stop arguing. Stop saying I'm Jamaican or I'm Ghanaian. America doesn't care. You must never behave as if your life belongs to a man. Do you hear me? Auntie Afika said. Your life belongs to you and you alone. I am interested in challenging the mainstream ideas of what is beautiful and what is acceptable. They themselves mocked Africa, trading stories of absurdity, of stupidity, and they felt safe to mock, because it was a mockery born of longing and of the heartbroken desire to see a place made whole again. When I'm in a good mood I like to cook. 
but I don't like saying it in public because I find myself being resentful of the idea, now you will make a good wife. You can cook, right? So when people ask me I go, no, I don't like cooking. Power is the ability not just to tell the story of another person, but to make it the definitive story of that person. She rested her head against his and felt, for the first time, what she would often feel with him, a self-affection. He made her like herself. Is love this misguided need to have you beside me most of the time? Is love this safety I feel in our silences? Is it this belonging, this completeness? I recently spoke at a university where a student told me it was such a shame that Nigerian men were physical abusers like the father character in my novel. I told him that I had recently read a novel called American Psycho, and that it was a shame that young Americans were serial murderers. I am a person who believes in asking questions, in not conforming for the sake of conforming. I am deeply dissatisfied about so many things, about injustice, about the way the world works and in some ways, my dissatisfaction drives my storytelling. Because of writers like Chinua Akib and Kamara Lay. I realized that people like me, girls with skin the color of chocolate, whose kinky hair could not form ponytails, could also exist in literature. I'm very feminist in the way I look at the world, and that worldview must somehow be part of my work. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.